Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage of the biggest tech conferences in the industry here at the Open Networking Summit in Santa Clara Convention Center, unpacking the future of networking. And joining me for this segment is the IDC networking team, the power t uh, play team uh, from Canada. We've got Nav Chandler and Brad Casemore. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on this segment for theCUBE. Thanks very much, Stu. We want to thank you for uh, not discriminating and putting guys with uh, radio faces on the air here. Yeah, so, so so in Canada, do we have you know a different pronunciation of SDN, or is it uh... We say A, right, Brad? Yes, before Although, we say everything. And thanks, too, I'm, I'm glad to be here. By the way, I'm a transplanted Canadian. I'm living in Boston, so. But we, still, we still say so, uh, yeah, you know, home of uh, the, the, the East Coast studio East Coast. of the Cube. So, uh, guys, you guys go to a lot of the shows. You've been looking at this technology just like we do on the Cube. So, want to dig into it now? If I could start with you, um, you know, last week you were at Mobile World Congress uh, in, in Barcelona. Um, you know, very different audience, I think, from this show. What what can you bring back for us as kind of the key learnings from that event? Yeah, I was there, and uh, it seems like it's just blurring from one week to the other. You're absolutely right. A very different different audience, big show, but guess what? It was all about apps and content. So the big news, of course, was Facebook's acquisition of WhatsApp, but what was even more surprising besides that was what the WhatsApp CEO said, he's getting into the voice business. So pretty significant, but uh, in terms of SDN and NFV, a lot of buzz, a lot of activity, actually, lots of NFV uh, announcements, trials, HP announced their open NFV, uh, number of other vendor announcements. So mobile world is more than just mobile. It's content, apps, and everything to do with networking. Uh, yeah, so you know. I'm wondering if you could give us from, from uh, just kind of a market standpoint. Yeah. Um, my take is that NFV solutions are probably a little bit further along. There's actually more different products I can point to out in the marketplace and adoption. Um, do you guys have any revenue numbers or just anecdotes that you can give us as to kind of NFV adoption? So, good question, Sue. I mean, NFV adoption will happen more quickly because the service providers have formed the group, you know, the standards group, and have made significant progress. In less than a year and a half, they've actually defined use cases. And at Mobile World, we saw, I saw many examples uh, from Telefonica, from NTT, uh, BT, and others that were deploying it. Now, in terms of revenue, none of these applications are yet going to hit the hit the bottom line but long term i think nfv will have multiple orders of billions of dollars of impact in terms of value creation for the service providers yeah. so so brad um, you travel also you, you know right. to a lot of the networking shows you you know you, you look at interop you look at this show there's lots of other sdn shows wonder if you can you know where does this show fit in the overall ecosystem of networking today I think it, this show is is an interesting one and, and a unique one in that it brings together so many aspects of the industry. Uh, we have, you know, obviously NAVs here at NFV. It's rare actually that we're at the same event, but we're at this yeah. event because it does cover telco adoption. It does cover cloud adoption. There's more and more discussion of what enterprises of varying sizes, starting with the largest and starting in verticals like financial services, will do with SDN. Uh, of course, the vendors across all those markets are here. So it's a show, I think, that really is, uh, uh, you know, the biggest and, and, and uh, the landmark SDN show right now. Yeah, uh, so, you, you know, you mentioned there, there's a lot of vendors at this show, yeah. actually. Um, you've been walking around, you've been talking to a lot of people. I mean, you know, are the vendors just, you know, coming together, you know, drinking their own Kool-Aid and saying that, you know, this is how we finally, you know, topple the giant in the industry? Or, you know, what, what, what are you seeing out there? You, you mentioned financial there's, services. There's a, there's a lot of variation in terms of solutions. Uh, there's a lot of variation in terms of approach, in terms of architecture. I mean, the SDN is an architectural model above all. It's, uh, uh, you know, and then products, of course, are built. Um, 
according to that model, and, and, and they vary enormously. And I think the thing that I would say is that we're seeing tremendous uh, disparity in how the market is reacting. For instance, this all started, look at the board of directors here at the ONF, it all started with hyperscale. Uh, and it's working its way through to very large cloud service providers, uh, and then of course, the largest players in the financial services who from a data center standpoint, look a lot like hyperscale. You know, you've got guys like Goldman Sachs, for instance, and uh, Fidelity. Their data centers, they have more than one data center and they're building scale out data centers to support their application workloads. Yeah, so, so, you know, if you, the, the morning keynotes, I, I think kind of, you know, had some of those big guys out there. If, yeah. if you look at NTT, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, it, it's making a big push into many different aspects of SDN and NFV. Um, I mean, they made an acquisition. I, I heard, you know, it's hundreds of millions of dollars for that acquisition uh, to get them into the NFV market. You know, most enterprise companies aren't going to make an acquisition Right. to take yep. advantage of that. Uh, Nav, I, I think, know you were watching closely AT&T. Yeah, uh, yeah, did, did I hear right that they spend $50 billion a year on CapEx? No, it's actually 20, they spend 20 okay. billion a year on I'm CapEx, sorry, 20, which but it's is still, still a huge still a amount of money. Billion, I mean. so, 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 so let's give you a little insight. John Donovan was also at Mobile World, and you know, you'd think this, this a person like John would have had a lot of prominence at, uh, at a Mobile World show, but I think here today, and, I, and you're asking Brad, and I have the same kind of view, this is a real melting pot. This conference, you got everyone from dev developers to VCs, yeah. CEOs here of startups as well as larger companies, so I mean, pretty impressed. Now, NTT and AT&T are two of the early adopters in the large telcos, but both taking different strategies. Yeah. AT&T made a significant announcement that they're going to revamp their whole procurement. That 20 billion capex is not going to be guaranteed to the, the Cisco's and Alcatel's, Juniper's, et cetera. So I think that's a significant transformation point yeah. in the industry. So it's do they huge. have some estimate? I mean, you know, that 20 billion, are they going to save 10%, 30%? You know, what, 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 well, what's, what, what's their Yeah, you know, we as analysts, you know, we've been asked that and you know, I'm going to say that it's going to take, it's, we probably see next year, even 5% of that CapEx really get impacted. One of the things that's, uh, that a lot of people don't realize is that their biggest cost is really in their OPEX. And what John pointed out in at and and NTT are both focusing a lot also on OPEX. So trying to do everything at once is not going to happen overnight. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know what we've found talking to most CIOs today, maybe not at the you know $20 billion level, but CIOs today, the CapEx gets the budget approved, yeah. and then the OpEx is where they have the huge savings. But yeah. um, what's different is, you know, there's been competitors uh, out there in networking that have said, oh, we, we might be able to save you on a CapEx, you know, 10, 20, maybe 30%. There's the potential here that we could be talking, you know, a significant more. I mean, you know, just from you know old way versus new way it might be 70 percent, you know, cheaper. Right. And right. the operational expenses should be, you know, 10x better uh, than what you were doing before. You know, so do, I mean, do you think that's real? And how long does it take for that to get kind of percolate through the rest well, of the know, you know marketplace? When you look at opex in uh, telecom service providers, it's anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of their overall budget. So it's huge and. It's going to take, you know, the CapEx savings part will happen with NFV first when we build virtual appliances, x86, that's where they want to go. And I think they'll start off in small steps. So the overall impact of CapEx is not going to be, you know, 10, 20, 30 percent year over year until we get some of the innovations from the community here at this conference, right? Open source, programmability, SDN and NFV are enablers. It's all about programmable networks and open APIs. It was very interesting to see the some of the vendors and to hear some of the telcos talking about this issue. I mean, this, NAV covers this full time, but I'm fascinated that how much of this has come from the pressure that they've seen from the OTT you know, cloud service providers. There's a lot of higher value services that you know the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks are providing, and telcos realize that if they don't make a move and begin to adopt some similar technologies and processes, they, they could lose this opportunity for good. 
I think it's a significant impetus for them. Yeah, so, so Brad, the, the, going back to the comment you made about this being a real melting pot of you know various pieces, uh, one, one of the critiques I've had on networking for a long time is it tends to be an isolated silo. Uh, you know, networking doesn't necessarily play well with others. Uh, you know, I, I lived at the intersection of storage, network, storage and networking for many years, and storage would say, <laughs> I'm not performing well, <laughs> and you know, can you fix this? And you know, QoS was a four-letter word for most of the networking guys. So, you know, do you see things changing, um, or you know, what, what what needs to happen to really you know transform and get people out of that? Silo? Sure, I would say that it's already happening in the in the in the hyperscale world. I mean, that's that's happened, right? They they have a more collaborative approach to IT, to how they use technology, to how uh, to the processes, to 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 how they build their networks, to how they deliver their application workloads, and and how they develop infrastructure for that. The big question is, what happens in the enterprise as workloads move to the cloud? I think silos will persist in a lot of enterprises for you know, years. And certainly there are a great number of, of, of vendors who would tell you that and some who will argue otherwise. But there's no question that you know, more applications, more workloads will move to the cloud. And as enterprises adopt private cloud, they have to rethink how they deliver their applications. And once they rethink how they deliver their applications, they move to things like orchestration. And then they look at how their infrastructure aligns with that. So once that happens, the silos break down. In some enterprises, it's going to take a long time. So you know, you've been meeting with a lot of people at this event. You know, how are we doing? You know, you know, uh, we usually like, like to use sports analogies here on the cube. Uh, you know, if we take you know maybe baseball is not, yeah. not the right we'll one for you. We use hockey now. Um, so, you know, <laughs> you know hockey is the Zamboni clearing off the ice at the beginning, and people are getting into their seats. Are we still in the first period? If it's hockey, you know, or is the game already won and we're just playing out the clock? I mean, where are we with you know kind of that that transformation? Yeah. Yeah, I think that some players, again, uh, have, uh, have been playing the game and continue to play the game. So you look at, obviously, Google, Facebook, Microsoft on the data center side, uh, Amazon, and, and, and those, those sorts of companies. They've been playing this game for a little while, and then there are a tier of cloud service providers who are still moving forward. Maybe it's the first period intermission for them, but they're, 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 they've begun playing the game. And then you've got some who are clearly, you know, just getting their skates on and they're, and they're they're going to have a basically try to get the feel for the ice and figure out exactly how far they're going to play the game. I think I think it's very early for some companies. So in the telecom space, I mean, this is mind blowing because getting all the telecom guys to get together in such a period of time to do NFV and get people to actually develop this. We're we're not even in the you know halfway through the first period if a hockey game uh, to use that analogy. I mean, there's a long long way to go. The good news is that they need to learn how to try and fail. I think we heard uh, Vinod Kosla and some of the other speakers at this conference say, telcos have to learn how to fail as well as be successful, but they have to do it fast. Because Google, Facebook, as Brad said, they're so far ahead that that race, if you're looking at a marathon, there's, you know, there's a lot of catching up these guys have to do. And, uh, and I think the, the service providers have got to change their culture. And part of what's nice about this conference is that John Donovan made a recruiting pitch <laughs> at the uh, several times from AT&T, which is you know, interesting because he's in Silicon Valley and AT&T is not obviously top of mind or any service provider, but they're going to, you know, I think they're sending a strong signal and yeah. it's going to take time. And to, and to continue the hockey analogy, we've even seen a few fights, which is <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you know the IT industry is uh, you know not above dropping the gloves, yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know uh, putting some people in the penalty box. Um, so, what are you looking at, Brad, over the kind of the next six to twelve months? You know, what kind of market indicators can people look for to see that this is maturing, uh, that you know the, the ice is ready to go on and you know get involved? Uh, what, what should people be looking for over the next kind of I six think, to twelve months? I think we're definitely watching the customer adoption rates and watching. The size of companies, what those companies do, vertical markets, that's something that we'll be tracking closely and we do expect the adoption is ramping up. Uh, there, there are various you know, ways that this technology is cut, of course, we have network virtualization, we have, you know, in the telcos we have NFV, we have, you know, open flow based SDN, which this show is uh, predicated on in the ONF, and we have network disaggregation also happening with 
you know, vendors like Cumulus and PK8 and Dell's adoption of Cumulus. These are all things that I think we're watching very closely. We expect this to be an eventful year, but somewhat of um, a bridge year, if you will. I think there are bigger developments coming, but this year will be a year of uh, uh, laying some significant groundwork and seeing some inroads made in, in certain parts of the market. The broader market still still to come. So, so Brad, I, I do have one more question for you. When, when we look at really the financials of you know the data center, um, if we go out a couple of years from now, um, is networking a smaller piece of the pie? Does it move over to applications? Uh, kind of that mix of hardware versus software. You know, what, what what does it look like in a couple of years? I think increasingly, and people have said this for a long time, the skill set of network professionals uh, has to be extended, has to be expanded. You know, they're trying to learn more about virtualization, more about uh, server-side uh, automation tools like Chef and Puppet and CF Engine. Uh, they, uh, they are developing um, architectural skills, cloud architect uh, skills. And I think those changes are consonant with some of the changes we're seeing in the technology side. Obviously, if software will not eat the world, it certainly is recasting it. And I think this is a significant, uh, it's going to be with us to stay. Software is changing yeah, your industry. Yeah. Mark Andreessen's running down the hallway to tell you it <laughs> is eating the world. Uh, now, my last question for you is, you know, yeah. the, the, the telcos, yeah. um, you know, in a couple of years from now, do, do we see them playing a much larger role? Um, you know, one of the questions we've been posing is, you know, should you not build another data center? You know, should you just put everything into kind of the hostings, the clouds, the you know, and the telcos? You know, providing that that bandwidth. Um, you know, how, how is this? You know, kind of mega trend impacting yeah, that, that's their a, that's, role in, in the You know, the Stu, IT that's space? that's exactly the right question. In fact, I'm working as part of my plans this year is to look at the different business models because some telcos, like take Verizon or even CenturyLink. Say so we're building out data centers, they have made acquisitions, we see that for the last few years, NTT. Others, telcos are going to be, we're going to be almost like over the top. They're going to use other infrastructure and sell services and value. And then you have the content itself. So one of the things that I think you're going to see is a lot of partnering between content providers like what Comcast did with Netflix, Deutsche Telekom doing in Europe with Spotify where there's revenue sharing deals. Uh, Cisco is doing it with AWS for VPNs. So I think you're going to see some very creative models. The key question I ask is not all of these telecom service providers are going to survive. You're going to see more M&A action uh, over the years as wireless and wireline infrastructure also converge. So you've got lots of moving parts and SDN and NFV are two of the, you know, I call it two of the wheels of the gear of Third one being orchestration that I like to draw, that all three are really important for the telecom providers. You shouldn't have said M&A, I saw some investment bankers turn around. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, rapid, real quick, last question, you know, Nav first and then Brad. Uh, coolest either startup or technology or project that you see at this show or in your recent travels that people should keep a close eye on? Whoa, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. I, I, I mean, I think I've seen, uh, I've been really impressed with TLF, which has happened to be one of the companies that AT&T uh, announced, and I got to meet them some time ago, and I've seen and heard evidence of success. I mean, they are really opening up. I mean, their platform is completely open. It's northbound, southbound, multi-vendor. I mean, it has all the things and it's not based in the U.S., which is interesting too, because you think of everybody being here in Silicon Valley. Uh, so that's one of that's an example. I think it's definitely a cool company. I'm really watching them. Right, and Brad? Yeah, I think there's a there are a number of one, a number of companies that I think are very interesting, and I think there's beyond what we're seeing today, there'll be a wave of very interesting analytics that'll come about in the next stage. But right now, I'd have to say the company that's uh, made some significant strides, and I think the uh, recent announcement that they had with Dell, I'd have to say Cumulus, you know, mainly it's not strictly an SDN company, it's more about network disaggregation, but I think that announcement is is very significant and it's indicative of, you know, the uh, the power of software in the network industry right now. Well, Brad and Nav, uh, thank you for sharing uh, with us everything that you think about uh, SDN. <laughs> so, uh, this is Stu Miniman uh, with Silicon Angles, the Cube, live coverage from the Open Networking Summit 2014. We'll be right back with our next guest.